I'm Adam Short. Welcome to The Green Room, the LA Times video series focusing on California's cannabis, commerce, and culture. In this very special episode of The Green Room, we're showcasing some of our favorite moments of marijuana merriment. They include an attempt at high yoga, a dispensary visit with a busload of canna curious seniors, bud tender tips, and a joint rolling lesson with music legend David Crosby. This is The Green Room. I never thought it was a good idea to get high with my parents, but somebody else's parents is a whole different story. I'm at a bus stop at Laguna Woods Village Retirement Community where a bunch of seniors are about ready to get on a bus, take a trip to a local dispensary to find out what cannabis can do for them. I'm Adam Shorn and this is The Green Room, the Los Angeles Times video series focusing on California's cannabis, commerce, and culture. The number of seniors using cannabis is trending upward. According to the most recently published National Survey of Drug Use and Health Data, an estimated 6% of U.S. adults 65 or older, that's more than 3.3 million people, have used cannabis in the past year. For perspective, it was just 0.5% in 2002. I got, got in a terrible accident. I got run over by a car. Ooh. I was on my morning walk. And at the hospital and rehab, they had me on opioids, which I've gotten off of completely. Okay. And I'm using the uh, cannabis. I use indica, the indica blend, because it keeps me more relaxed. And it seems to help, it helps me with the pain and it helps me sleep. Do the cannabis edibles help you, do you think, get off the opioids? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they, they give me a bunch of painkillers when I left rehab. Yeah. Right. And uh, I actually haven't taken any of them. I never took any of them. I just started taking the, uh, the cannabis. I was going to ask why, if, if you can get it delivered right to you, like what, what's the upside? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. I, free lunch. Yeah. Oh, We're really happy to have the Senior Shuttle offer again here at Pharmacy Santa Ana. We this is the first yeah. month back. Yeah, this yeah. is our first month back after almost a three-year hiatus due to COVID. So we're changing the shuttle a little bit. This year, we're actually inviting uh, seniors from all over Orange County and even LA to come with us. And then we're also busing seniors over from Laguna Woods. So we have the seniors come on over to the dispensary and then we have them enter the event and education space. There we have some refreshments and some food for them to enjoy. They sit down and then we have educational speakers from myself today. We gave the basics of cannabis like really what they need to understand before they go into dispensary and then we also had a special guest speaker sue taylor who is a senior who opened her own cannabis dispensary to help other senior citizens get off pharmaceutical medications and live a happier and healthier life i was a catholic school principal yeah. what yeah come on catholic school principal if somebody had told me 12 years ago i'd be an advocate for, for cannabis, I said, oh, you've been smoking too much. You got the wrong lady. Seniors okay. are my passion okay. because we're, the, we're becoming the largest demographic for the first time in the history of the country, and seniors will need our help. And cannabis is an alternative medicine, and it should be like acupuncture, uh, Reiki, yoga. It's, it's all about body, mind, and spirit and total health. And I'm here to deliver that message today, that you get better as you age, not the other way around. I try different things. Okay. Just, you know, I think everybody needs to do that to figure out what works for you, okay. for your body. Do you ever take it to the point where you feel like like the psychoactive part of it, or is it just simply for the pain management? Pain, and pain management, yeah, because yeah. I'm kind of a wuss. Okay. <laughs> Did you make a list when you were at this? I do. I okay. have my list. What do you got on your list? <laughs> so I'm going to get that tincture. Okay. The formula tincture. And these, are, and these were all things that were suggested because of the stuff that they were talking yes. about that you weren't necessarily aware of. Yes, I was talking to a couple of the vendors. So it has THCA, and THCA is super good for inflammation. It's really, really strong anti-inflammatory. So most seniors only come to cannabis especially ones that, that doesn't have experience with it before, for two reasons. They can't sleep or they're in pain. Everyone, but especially seniors, we need to be educated about what the cannabis does and does not do. Okay. It's the educational component, because you have to know which products fit your body. 
You have to know that, and you have to know the results that you want. You have children and grandchildren. I do. And they know now. They were a little surprised. Yeah. They were like, yeah. Grandma? Yeah. <laughs> Edibles definitely are very popular because they're long-lasting uh, relief, and then also because seniors don't necessarily want to smoke cannabis anymore, and some of them aren't, more, aren't familiar with the more um, or the delivery methods, and so they just feel really comfortable with the edibles, which actually are usually at a really good price point. And there's so many different kinds of edibles to the variety. It's a that's really yeah, they can yeah. have teas, they can have chips, they can have gummies, they can have chocolates, they can yeah. have cookies. Um, so many things for them to enjoy, and so yeah. a lot of them really gravitate towards that. The whole idea of seniors getting on a bus and going to a weed dispensary and getting a discount on their pot products may sound like a punchline, but at the end of the day, they had a chance to socialize, they learned a lot, and it helped improve the quality of their lives. Since I have a plant-based diet, I got the vanilla, pe big peats, vanilla, almond, and then this one is the chocolate chip. Okay. Because everybody has to have chocolate chip. Okay. And then I went to Mary's Medicinals, and I got their new combination tincture. What was the draw for this? Sleep. Sleep. Okay, and then I got patches. Well done, well done. Yeah. And arms reaching side the knees, hands to the outside of your feet. You can rock side to side. You can extend one leg out. Whatever feels nice. This episode was not my idea. Because it's about yoga. And I've only done yoga once in my life and I did not like it. But it's also about cannabis enhanced yoga. And I've tried cannabis before and I liked it. We're at a backyard yoga studio in South Central Los Angeles for a cannabis enhanced backyard yoga session. How long have you been offering cannabis enhanced yoga classes and what does it entail? I've been offering this class for about four years now. We do it once a month. Usually we do yin yoga, which I think is really good with cannabis because it's very slow and relaxing. And I always like to accompany that with a sound bath, which is another level of sensory experience. With a sound bath and a yoga, I find students can really like tap into their feelings and their body. We can breathe a little deeper and slower while we are high on cannabis, okay. yeah. Is there, is there anything that you need to do differently or approach differently when you are doing cannabis enhanced yoga? I think you have to be more um, in tune with your body and know like what is it that you need from the practice. Everybody feels different, right? How does the sound bath fit into it? Is it just another part of the tuning in or does it help you tune things out? I think it's both. I think it helps you tune, because you have to tune in to tune out, right? <laughs> So it does give you a different sensation. And I have students who told me that with a sound bath, their mind can like travel into different dimensions, I guess. Well, if I travel into a different dimension, call me back. No, I, I, I think I said when we first spoke that I'm, I'm a little um, apprehensive about doing this because I've done yoga precisely once. And as I said, I was frustrated when I did that. So is there something that I, as someone who hasn't done yoga before, should keep in mind whether it's cannabis enhanced yoga or regular yoga. Just notice how you feel in your body and your mind and know that what is it that you, what feels good to you. Okay. Yeah, so basically cannabis yoga is a feel good experience. Okay. So people will come in and they'll set up their space and they'll have time to smoke, uh -huh. socialize, make new friends. So we'll do that for maybe like, I don't know, until everybody arrives yeah. within like 15 minutes. And then we'll start the yoga um, for like about an hour or so. Okay. And then afterwards, um, you're welcome to stay, hang out and like smoke and like chat, you know, with a new friends or yeah. whatever you want. Good, sounds like fun. I'm, I'm feeling cannabis enhanced. I mean, is that, is that not a, just a straight answer? It's like a high, little high. Why do you have like, is there like one of those buttons when you leave the restroom? It's like, were you happy with this experience? Yes or no? Are you looking forward to doing this? I'm not, I, I no. <laughs> Take a deep breath in, extend your arms up, reach up. 
and then exhale, cactus your arms to 90 degrees, press your heart to the sky. Good, inhale, extend the arms back up. And then we're gonna twist to the right, bring your left hand on top of the right knee, right hand behind you. you. And then inhale, lengthen the spine, sit up a little taller. And then exhale, twist a little bit deeper. to the forearms if the body allows so you do whatever feels good for your body we're gonna stay here for mm, about a minute or so fun thing to do. Uh -huh. You interlace your fingers with your toes. So like you're holding hands with your feet. <laughs> this is a really, really, really awesome stretch for your feet if you can do it. Um, or you can walk your hands forward and fold. So many op options here to explore. your arms out and you cross the right arm over your left arm either once so you can press the back of the hands towards each other or you can wrap it around again and press the palms towards each other if you're able or you can hold on like elf you can hold on to your give yourself a bear hug final moment to just be and to check in with ourselves and notice the effect of our yoga practice, also the cannabis. And we'll seal our practice with an OM. So we'll take a deep breath in here. Oh. How did I like cannabis enhanced yoga? Well, a lot better than I like just yoga, but less than I like just cannabis. The um, sound bowls actually were very high on the list and the cannabis, well, no, <laughs> I don't mean to kid you. The cannabis is the only thing that made me stay out here and finish the whole thing. And I didn't feel very good about it, but I have a, it gave me a newfound appreciation for the art of yoga and it actually, I hope these words don't go on to haunt me, make me want to try it again. But probably with the cannabis still. 
a little ceramic <laughs> pipe here um, okay. with a little pepperoni packed with some waiting game from Glass House Farms. Okay. A little baguette here That's from baguette. Empire Glass. It's <laughs> not just a baguette. Yeah, we got a hamburger filled with uh, different kinds of fresh flour. That's oh, what I love. Fresh it's flowers different. come in all kinds. Yeah. Okay. In January 2016, Alice and Clark Campbell, aka That High Couple, sat down on their couch, fired up their video camera, and launched a YouTube channel dedicated to their enthusiasm for all things cannabis. Now, six and a half years later, they have 133,000 subscribers who tune in to watch their how-to video tutorials, their marijuana merchandise unboxing, and navigate things like puff, puff, putt, mini golf. If you follow that high couple on YouTube or on their Instagram feed, you'll know that they love to travel and they love to picnic. So we thought it'd be great to close out season two, having that high couple curate the perfect high summer picnic for you. I'm Adam Shorn and this is The Green Room. We've been trying to do a video with you since before season one. It's and, crazy. <laughs> and it didn't come together because of the COVID restrictions and all that. You had a very tiny 420 square foot apartment yes. in Hollywood. Yes. Yeah, upgrades. Yeah. Upgrades and here. so while we didn't get to do a video, that turned into the story mm -hmm. that we had. How have things changed for that high couple since I talked to you a year and five months ago? I feel like we've been given um, so many wonderful opportunities to incorporate travel a little bit into our content. We were flown out to Dallas recently and got to tour a giant warehouse. And I know that we're just starting to get back to events, which is just really exciting because I right. feel like that was such a big missing component of like being in the cannabis community here in LA. I think it is the best community hands down. So like to like be getting back into that now seeing a lot of familiar faces. It like always reminds me that we aren't just doing content in a vacuum. While we are putting together a uh, picnic that involves cannabis products, please, if you're going to picnic with pot, do it responsibly and do not violate any uh, laws. Make sure you look them up and know where you can and cannot consume cannabis legally. What is your theory of picnicking? When you put together a picnic, individual items we're gonna see all fit into what? I definitely feel like whenever you can kind of go for like really seasonal stuff, like especially fruits, I mean, fruits and also strains, like anything that feels <laughs> right. like it's like, oh, really of the time, like getting a nice variety between like sweet and savory, sour and, you know, acidic. Accessory wise, you always need the basics of a blanket and a basket to start with. Okay. Um, the more you can build out from that, if you can bring, you know, some fresh flowers to enjoy, if you can get a couple of different plates going to build off of and kind of build your categories and varieties like choose your own adventure uh, across the Exactly, yeah. There's a lot of fun ways to kind of like get creative with it. What would you say is your approach to cannabis that people should come see you guys for? I love, cannabis has always been a big part of our relationship. We smoked together on the first date and definitely bonded and over that. And watched Rango. And watched Rango, right? good okay. memory. Right. I love it. Still, it was still a good one story. of the all-time exactly. best stoner movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good. Um, but yeah, it's always been a huge part of our relationship and we've always just kind of wanted to be able to showcase that and normalize cannabis use yeah. and be able to kind of show that we've both worked nine to fives, Monday through Friday, and can be able to kind of do this and, and enjoy this on the nights and weekends. And, and incorporate it into our life responsibly and just kind of show that like, you know, that, 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 the stereo, that the stereotypical stoner out there doesn't necessarily fit that bar for everyone. As you go along in your careers with the YouTube channel, are you sort of like seeing what resonates with people? Oh, yes, yes, Definitely, See, seeing what resonates and also kind of having to uh, adapt to the current trends and everything. With yeah. I feel like YouTube is certainly our bread and butter, still is, is with horizontal yeah. video, but a lot of, of trends right now and apps and stuff are definitely leaning towards shorter content that is vertical, that is quick transitions, a minute or less kind of TikTok and reel style. Oh, so. Well, I've noticed, I've noticed the one or two of the most recent ones that you've done were like the vertical kind yes. of thing. And yeah. even yeah. YouTube is trying to get on, on board with that, but they have a feature called Shorts, which is basically their, their copy paste of, of TikToks and Reels right. and trying to get that feature onto the app, so. We thought that you guys would be the perfect ones to pick four or five things for the perfect high summer picnic. Because I couldn't, because I couldn't resist a pun. I love so, it, it's perfect. When well. people see this, this is the way the couple that loves to picnic Picnics. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We okay. pic picnics. Honestly, were were some of our first dates. I think it's such a fun way to be able to go out and enjoy your city in an inexpensive way. Just grab a blanket, grab some yeah. fruit and some cheese and some bread, maybe some smokes if you yeah. if you partake, and yeah. you know go enjoy the outside and some sunshine. 
in the beverage department. Jones Soda has just gotten into the cannabis okay, game. That is new. That this is, is new. Yeah, this is new. Exactly. New. It's just very exciting. I feel like all through high school, my friends and I would do photo shoots to try and get on the Jones Soda bottles because they were all photo <laughs> submitted. Who, who, she's reliving her high school years. I'm reliving my college years okay, with some yes, PBR. PBR <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I have many fond memories of beer pong and just celebrating with some PBR. So now to know that it's in a seltzer like like option. And, and people should know that it, it does not taste like beer at all. It's like yeah. a total seltzer drink. It's, it's fruity, that, it's right. tropical, um, and all of these are actually coming in at about 10 milligrams a pop in the full bottle. So okay. I think that's actually perfect for a picnic. You did mention the, the sumo uh, snacks. They're one of the first um, infused kind of chip or savory, you know crunchy, like a exactly, snack. a savory yeah. snack that we're getting into and stuff. So we've got their, their hot uh, fiery crunchies here, which are delicious. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's 10 milligrams in the entire um, pack. So once again, okay. really easy to eat without having to consume too much. Okay. Um, and then on the sweet side here, we've got some Camino gummies. These are only five milligrams per gummy. They're not covered in sugar, which is nice. So they're not super messy okay. um, and they're not too sticky either. So I feel like they are actually kind okay. of easy Perfect to just, just pick they're up, bite food. and not get my fingers too messy okay. or anything. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's the kind of flavors that I look for when I go picnic king, something that just tastes like a bite of summer. Like yeah. it's super citrusy. And exactly. Just easy it's eat. such a good little finish off and also to pair with some fruit here too. It just kind of Really right, good pairs. Everything. People might think that you've got a water bottle here, Clark. It's uh, the most it. unassuming thing on this blanket, I would say, but it actually might be the one of the most exciting things because, yeah, what looks just like a normal water bottle actually is oh its God. own bong. So okay. you, it comes with its own bowl that you, you can just- You just stored that in there. Stored, stored that in that there, there pre-packed, ready to go. Okay. You just pull it out, and then right. I love you can show it like- Look okay. at that function. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about the food aspect of this because that is the other big part. We talked about the cannabis themed things that'll then give you the munchies. You don't want to overconsume, As you just mentioned, the munchies are going right. to happen. So you right. want to come prepared for that. So as Clark was saying, we definitely try and go seasonal, at least with fruit and stuff. We've got some strawberries and grapes here. Um, I also think bread and cheese is always just another great staple to have at any picnic. That's kind of my starting point is bread, cheese, and fruit. I want you to give me your, your dream picnic spot with your dream cannabis celebrity consumer. Oh. I feel jealous because I think you might have already like at least had half of this experience because one of my favorite cannabis celebrities is Seth Rogen. <laughs> I want like a full like cooking chef experience or I'm also taking a dab. Dream infused picnic location has got to be Central Park on a hot summer day and seshing with Lady Gaga. You're just putting that out into the universe. That, let's manifest okay. that. Let's manifest that guys. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people have told me that they feel uncomfortable going into a dispensary for the first time because they're afraid of asking stupid questions. Just so you know, there are no stupid questions, but to make you feel more at ease when visiting a dispensary, we've put together a list of questions for you to ask the bud tenders. I'm Adam Shorn, and this is The Green Room, the Los Angeles Times video series focusing on cannabis commerce and culture in California. Being honest about that with us here to be able to help you, that is a good place to start because like we're here to kind of help you figure out the best way for you to feel comfortable in experiencing cannabis. I recommend starting with anywhere between two to five milligrams. Um, so that way you can kind of take a little bit at a time, low and slow. You can always take more, but you can never take less. There's also different kinds of edibles that have different onset times um, or different ways that you can take them. <laughs> Different kinds of edibles, whether it's one that you eat, like a gummy, or maybe even something like a tincture that you're consuming sublingually, um, which means like under the tongue, directly into your bloodstream. So it tends to have a faster onset. Um, but ones that you're consuming, like maybe gummies or chocolates, those have a longer onset time. So it's a little bit harder to gauge right at first how much you're taking. So it's really good to kind of pace yourself. <laughs> I recommend checking out anything with a high THCV count or high pinene count. I would say anything from Farm Cut, like their Pink Boost Goddess, or even some of the THCV tinctures. CBD is great for that because it's actually not gonna be psychoactive at all. It's a different cannabinoid um, a differing from THC where that's gonna give you the psychoactive effects. With CBD, it helps inflammation, pain. Um, it's just a lot better at letting you keep that focus and not having anything kind of buzzy or cerebral going on while still giving you that relief.
We have a couple um, ones that stick out. Um, we have Classics Live Rosin. We also have 710 Percy Pods as well. What's really great about the rosin is it's a cannabis extracted with just heat and pressure as opposed to any other chemicals like butane or anything like that. So you could use hash or you could use whole flour. So it's solventless and it tends not to give you um, any headaches or kind of more of a uh, well-rounded high, I would say. It's very clean. There's a lovely tincture that's made with THCA and CBD. THCA is non-psychoactive, but it actually helps combat against inflammation and pain. Mary's Medicinal has an excellent one. Terpenes are naturally occurring throughout the world. If you smell a fruit, a vegetable, um, or in this instance, something like the cannabis plant, those natural aromas are their terpenes. And through consumption, that's what's giving us the various effects in different strains. So for instance, with something with uh, linalool tends to be more relaxing, but if you're allergic to lavender, that might not be your vibe. So maybe looking for something that's leading in more limonene, which tends to be uplifting and good for anti-anxiety, or even something like carifeline might benefit you as well. I'm really excited actually about Farmer and the Felon. They're a lovely company of outdoor grow that specifically helps with the Last Prisoner Project, a project dedicated to helping get nonviolent criminals out for marijuana offenses. The cannabis industry in itself is evolving, which is really awesome to see. And I think, especially here at Willow, we're taking such a different approach at really kind of opening the dialogue and diving into more than just like words on a box and a number on a box and really bringing intention back into consumption a little bit and getting to know how we want to feel overall as opposed to just right in that moment, like what we can get, you know? And the people who did it had never done either. Right. They don't have any idea. Right. I, on the, hey, shut the f up. We're doing an interview here, bird. We are here in Laurel Canyon. It's a bucolic Los Angeles neighborhood where lots of timeless music has been made and many, many joints have been smoked. David Crosby is among the best known musicians who wrote songs and got high in Laurel Canyon. He still gets high and he's still making music. His latest solo album is called For Free. We spent some time with the 80 year old musician who talked about his lifelong love of weed, his emergence as a social media icon, and his plans to enter the branded cannabis space. You like pot and you like lots of different things about it. What do you like about it? Well, I like getting stoned. Uh, getting high to me is fun. Now, not everybody likes that, but I've been doing it for a tremendously long period of time. Yeah, yeah. you got right? the hang of it. I have the hang of it. I like the effect of being high. I, I, you know, can always, I know how to deal with the munchies. I don't, I don't hit the ice cream, yeah, I hit yeah. the apple. Yeah, do you like the, the ritual of getting high? Because I, I realized once that, that the getting out my, you know, my pipe or whatever is- that, That's it, fun too. Yeah. I like the bonding. Yeah. My, my son gets, gets loaded. He's got a bong this high, and he takes hits that look like a cumulus cloud. <laughs> My wife li likes to smoke it. She and I, we'll take a couple of hits, have dinner together, and it's really fun. Uh -huh. uh, and we're a family. So then uh, my wife and I will go in, and we'll be in bed, and we'll be smoking it and playing words with friends, like right. uh, Scrabble on an iPad. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll be doing that, or we'll be watching movies out here in the office or something, but we're smoking it yeah. together and laughing our full heads off. Yeah. I, I can't tell everybody else what to do, but you know, it's worked for us for, well, I've been married to Jan for 43 some odd years and, and uh, it's working. Crosby and his wife, Jan, take a farm to table approach to marijuana. They grow their own weed, harvest it and smoke it. Cros gave us a tour of his current cannabis crop. So you're gonna tell me what these are? What's, what do we have? These are, no, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Are you not going to tell me because you don't know or you don't want me to know because it's proprietary? What is it? It's secret stuff. Secret yeah. stuff. Secret stuff. That smells oh. good. It smells a little, almost like mint. These are very, very healthy plants. My wife is, uh, is a damn uh, genius with plants. She's so, how old are these? These are, well, we, she started them from seeds in May. Okay. So they're just one summer long. You were responsible responsible for helping the Beatles find weed when they came to the U.S. for the first time? Am I getting that right? In England back then, but they had only hash and they would mix it with tobacco. Now I get there and I'm used to rolling joints of really good weed. I give George Harrison a joint of really good weed and he likes that a whole 
explode better than hash and tobacco. George was like, really? John, even more. And then when they came, of course, to California, that was, that was the first call. Yeah. Of course, we need some of that. You've got to get it over here right now. And I did. Look here, you see the crystals? Yep. Little tiny crystals all over it? Yep. That's like a, like a high for. time centerfold. Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> what we're looking for. Yeah. Now these are all, all different kinds and they're all very healthy. I have to confess, I am not the gardener here. I help, you know, get them, I help prune them, I help love on them, but my wife raised them from seeds. So she's doing all the work and you're coming in and being the face of it, that sounds... Yeah. yeah. Crosby plans to take advantage of his status as one of the world's most iconic weed consumers by launching a cannabis brand called The Mighty Cros. While news of the brand has already caused buzz nationwide, there's no product behind the label yet because Crosby and his partner are waiting for the federal prohibition against pot to ease. Tell me about your move into the cannabis space, the mighty cross. So you and Steven Sponder have partnered on, you have a brand and you're looking for brand partners. We sat down and we looked at it. We've got a, we've got a thing to sell. That's me being one of the best known pot smokers in America. I figure the best known is Willie. After that's probably Snoop. And then it's probably me. My business, the music business is failing. It isn't sporting musician. So an additional business would be a real help to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second reason is I want it legal because I know I was in prison with guys who were in there for that much marijuana. Prison's not funny. Yeah. They try to kill you and you're scared all the time. Do you feel that the cannabis, because you're on the normal, normal board of advisors, right? Still? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That the drug laws and the cannabis laws in particular unduly affect people of color. I think I heard you mention the brown people and the black people. And yeah, it's not a matter of, of, do I think, it's a matter of can you read the numbers? The numbers are unequivocal and quite plain. Yeah. You know, black people get busted more. That's because the cops look at them more and it's not fair. Yeah. And to put anybody, black, white, brown, yellow, purple, pink, any color, in jail for a handful of flowers is nonsense. The one thing that went really well in these is that we got them to bush out. Normally a plant has a single stalk that comes up like this, mm -hmm. and there'll be a few tops at the very top. It'll split a couple of times at the very top. We early on split this plant in all directions. Like, like physically? like you Physically. Just, okay. Every time there was one of these, we take this out and make it the two on the side go this way. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get this. You know, we thought we'd just jump in and it'd all happen for us. Well, that didn't happen that way. A, first of all, celebrity brands didn't work, turned out to work anywhere near as well as everybody thought they were gonna. When you can make a national deal, until you can, you have to make a separate deal in each state. Right, because you can't cross state lines. And yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. You can't do 50 different business deals. Yeah. But what we're waiting for is seeing, and we have seen, not, not enough, but we have seen a few people who've taken the long view. Yeah. And that's what we're looking for. Because yeah. I want to be doing this for the rest of my life. It's easy and it's fun and I'm suited for it. Do you feel that you're well positioned for when, when, when it becomes a national, you know, a federal I think so. Thing? A couple of things working for me. People know that you don't butter your toast. They, they know that I, I actually speak my mind. People show pictures of their joints to you on Twitter. <laughs> that and, just and you happened weigh, organically. And, and you weigh in buttons. Somebody stone. showed me a picture of a joint yeah. on Twitter, and I said, well, no. Uh, and I was off and running. You know, I'm just, I try to be funny. It's a weird thing, man. I like people. Yeah. I like community. You, you like the interacting? I like it. Yeah. It's always been fun for me. Yeah. When we evolve the strain that we're going to be famous for, the Mighty Cross, mm -hmm. I know which strains I'm going to pull it from. Mm -hmm. You know, I know which I know what I'm looking for. We don't give us a roadmap, just a little. No. You just would rather. No, no, there's some secret stuff. It's in like there. it's like here. Mighty Cross will be a very strong pot. Okay. I'll tell you that it's going to be very strong pot, uh, as strong as we can make it be. And we know which ones are which, and we are working on it. It's, gonna, it's probably there's no make point in smoking pot if it's weak. Yeah, I cannot roll a joint to save my soul. I'm show you. Know. What I would do if I'm using little narrow ones like this is I. I pull two of them, just because I, I like to have more paper.
way that you catch it under to make it roll is tricky. That's sort of where the rubber meets the road. And this one of the tricks I'll teach you. So they're just damp, not wet. And that will let you get a tight roll like this. So you kind of kept, you kept pressure underneath the whole time. This is funny, I could see my future joint rolling lessons. Yeah. Okay, next. Step up. Step up. Bring your papers. Bring your weed. I'm not giving you weed. You gotta bring your own damn weed. You wanna tamp this down so that it's already. So it's you... evenly distributed. Yeah, and you could use a little more. Okay. It's not bad for an amateur, man. I feel like you wear the training wheels on that. That's all about touch in there. Now, once you get it there, see, look what you did, man. Take your finger. Again, and you can mm -hmm. a little dab, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And go like this. Pinch it and twist it. Make a little nipple out of it. Fantastic. I feel like I've learned something. It'll be 25 bucks. <laughs>